If you just ordered the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II or you're planning to get this camera, I know you are super pumped and excited. Or even if you're planning to get the A6700. But what if I told you without the right gear, you're probably gonna be stuck recording the same 8-bit data type stuff that you had on the Mark I or on your ZV-1 that you're trying to get away from. Today, I'm gonna to share with you the seven data essentials that you need to streamline your workflow so that you not only can record in 10-bit, but so that your computer doesn't fall apart when you're trying to edit or even play back these video files. And by the end of this video, I'll show you exactly the things you need to do in order to keep your system running seamlessly. But as we're going through this, I want you to think about which accessory is gonna be crucial to prevent you from running into serious bottlenecks in your workflow. We'll talk about that later. Can you tell me the difference between these two SD cards? One is a UH-1 SD card and one is a UHS-2 SD cards. As you can see, it's two different rows in the other one. This is the main thing right out the gate. Unfortunately, unlike smartphones, your camera doesn't have built-in data. I wish that they did and honestly, it, it's high time that they did. I'm not gonna get on a rant, but high time that they should have that. But you need an SD card. For everything that you want to save on your camera, you need an SD card and please, 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 do not buy some 510 one terabyte SD card, record days and weeks on one SD card, albeit an unreliable SD card. And then all of your stuff, trust me, ask me how I know, it gets bricked, blocked, and messed up. And then your cards are corrupt and it doesn't work. So buy reliable SD cards. Two of the brands that I love to use is SanDisk. And then I love to use this one uh, by Kingston. These I like really good. These are probably the most affordable, reliable UHS two SD cards. And then of course, SanDisk has some as well. And of course your favorite creators are going to use some variation of an SD card. And usually those are going to be reliable in English, reliable. You'll see ones like Angel Bird, even Sony has their own SD card as well, but it doesn't matter the size that you choose to use. I would recommend at least 128 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes is going to be the best that you can use as far as, well, not really the best. It's really going to be just the baseline. Anything above that, that's great. You will be able to add more, but this will get you hours of data and it's what you're going to need right out the gate. Next up is going to be your storage. Now you can use those larger systems that will allow you to, uh, you know, save it to a RAID system or NAS system and all of that stuff. You can research all those things, but this is what you're gonna need to stay portable and mobile and honestly just flexible, especially if you wanna get out the house at some point and be just away from like working at home already, this is gonna be your go-to or if you're traveling for your work. There's a huge difference between these types of storage drives versus this one. This is what you call an HDD or that hard disk spinning one like from back in the day. And then these are SSD solid state drives. Even though I have this one here that is by SanDisk, but beware because there are so many versions of these SanDisk ones. Some people say they, they've had them for forever, they work great, and then there's a ton of people running into issues where these crash and then they're not able to get their stuff off of it. So I wouldn't recommend this one, but this is one that I have. Um, and like I said, people say they recommend it or whatever, that's fine. You take it at your own risk. I honestly recommend using Samsung. Samsung is gonna be great. And the other reason you wanna use these is because they're fast. This is the older T5, but they're up to the T7, and they will continue to probably make other versions of this, but the T5s are great. I've had these for years and literally dropped them onto the concrete. They've been in my bags and you don't have to baby these. With the HDDs, the spinning disc, it's the same way like if you came from the CD player era <laughs> or if you're just at least aware, if you scratch that disc, it won't play well. You don't wanna play with your data. And even though the HDDs are great, those are great for storage, not necessarily to edit from or to offload stuff from your SD cards to those. This next set is exactly the kind of pairing that you want for your SD cards, and that is a fast SD card reader. There's all kinds that are coming out and everyone says that theirs are fast, and they probably are. Uh, a lot of the ones that I've tested, they're really good, but the thing is when you're working with a dedicated SD card, especially when you have a lot of data and a lot of space on these SD cards, you need to transfer that information super fast. So how fast it writes, you have the write and the read speeds, how fast it writes to the SD card is the info that's going from the camera to the card. 
and you'll see the read speeds like on SanDisk with the letter R, that is how fast that SD card is reading from these SD card readers to your computer. That is the stuff that slows you down and bog down your workflow immensely because right out the gate, it takes forever to upload or offload your footage. So yes, you can use something else, but I also recommend at least uh, reading some of the small print to see are there brands like SanDisk that says that they will only guarantee those top speeds that their card is rated for when you use their proprietary SD card reader. So this is the SanDisk SD card reader, which is why I have it for my SanDisk SD cards that I have. And so just make sure you pick these up. They're always great to have, even if you do decide to use uh, something that is also an SD card holder, that is also an SD card reader, those are great, but again, if you're doing 10 bit high speed data, you want to use the best of the best and not bog down your workflow. This next one is something that's just very easy, but it's not something everyone will be able to do if you are a PC user and you have a RAM chip that you can access, which most of them you do. For Mac, this is not something that with most of the modern ones that you can get, you just have to buy already the good version or the fast versions. Now, anything M1, M2 chips, you're fine. Uh, and anything before that, it's like, you gotta do your own research, but at least M1, M2 chip Macs, you're good. But with a PC, you can update the RAM card, which is the speeds uh, and the memory that you have for the speed of the computer, if that makes sense. It probably didn't, but again, Google it. But this RAM or random access memory, this memory speeds is definitely gonna help when it comes to editing the 10-bit video files that you're wanting to record on your camera. So if you can update them, update them. But if you need to buy a new computer, just get a new computer. And that's one of the things nobody talks about when you're upgrading all of your different stuff. You got all this data, you got all this information, and then your computer can't read it. And so dad, you're like, why did I buy this camera if my computer can't see it? And most of the time you buy your computer for work, not necessarily for video work. So the next time you upgrade your computer, make sure it can do the 4K and at least be rated for at least like 6K or something like that speeds or somewhere there about in the ballpark for 10 bit video files so that your computer can see what you're doing. Next up is having a good amount of SD cards. And yes, some of these are those cheapy ones that you may have had with other cameras, almost dropped it. <laughs> and then other ones are ones that are the good ones that I talked about, but the cheaper ones that you used to use maybe with older cameras that could take that and those worked for you. You can keep those for like Zoom recorders and other audio recording devices and stuff. Those are great for those. So a little pro tip there. And then just add on to the UHS-2 cards that you have and keep getting those SanDisk Extreme or Extreme Pro SD cards, at least like 128 gigabytes. Those cards can do the H.265, 422, 10-bit videos that your camera can record. These cables are your lifelines. And I mean that literally, especially if you wanna do that 4K USB-C recording, you need good cables. And I like to use these braided ones just because they're flexible. They don't wear and tear as often. Uh, and then two, they're fast. And so I like to have a little bit of length. I don't go over the 10 foot cables because for these, uh, you will start to notice that it slows down and it lags a bit. But with these Condor blue cables versus these J aux ones that I really like. And these are really good. These are reliable. I like these, but there's something amazing that in my experience that I've found with these Condor blue cables, or like I like to nickname them Condoriano and bees knees hall of fame star. If you know what episode of one piece that's from kudos to you, but these cables are great because not only can you USB-C live stream, you can also use these for charging. So when I've done an event, a live event, what I've used is this to plug into an AC power cable or something like that, or even in the computer. And what happens is it's not only charging, but it's also sending power. The other thing is if, if you're just plugged into an AC power outlet, you want the camera to not slowly drain over time, but hold the charge steady. The Condor Blue cables do that. That's right, the next one is a USB-C chargeable battery. These are by Small Rig, and I haven't covered these on a channel outside of, I think, a short, but these are amazing. I have completely swapped out my Sony batteries, which I love to use reliable branded batteries by the camera brand that you're using, because those are going to give you the absolute best performance. But the one thing that will always outdo performance for me is efficiency, because then at that point, it's outperforming it for me. And when I'm traveling, I don't wanna have to rely on solely a, a charger because think about it, you have your phone, 
you have your watch, you have your computer, or you may have a tablet, you got another device, you got to switch. It's just, you got a ton of stuff that need to be charged. You don't have just a bunch of cables or you don't wanna be like some octopus with a bunch of cables coming out of you. This makes life so much easier because usually you can just plug it into a USB-C port, connect it up to a cable or something like that instead of having to like just do a whole bunch of extra stuff or even carry a charger with you. Quick pro tip and bit of a warning here, you do not charge it through the USB-C port here while this is in your camera. You need to take it out of your camera and then start charging it. And you don't wanna run power to this actively because you can leave the battery door open on the camera. Don't run power to this while it's in the camera. Uh, you run the risk of frying your brand new investment. And I'm sure you don't wanna be out here like that out here in these real and digital streets. But these batteries are amazing. Definitely add it to your bundle, it's worth it. Bonus tip, go ahead and add one of these to your mix. I love this. It will power your computer in addition to power your camera and it takes up no space, pops out the AC power charger and these are amazing. So you can use these with your camera and it works. I dropped it. It works with all of your other stuff, but I just love stuff that's super powerful, efficient and small. So a little pro tip accessory here, throw this into the mix with all of your other stuff. Now, which one of these accessories do you feel like is the bottleneck with your workflow? I'll give you a couple seconds, just like three seconds to figure it out. Did you guess? Well, I will vote for you that that is going to be one of two things. And that is going to be either an SSD drive or it is going to be your card reader. And for me, that is always going to deal with the SSD drive because it doesn't take up too much time to transfer that data most of the time from the card to the computer, but it's where I'm saving that stuff that makes a huge difference because if I'm editing on a computer that already has a ton of stuff, it's super slow already or it's struggling, you're increasing the workload of the computer on top of everything else that it's trying to do. And once your computer goes, so goes your content workflow. Nothing else works if the workflow don't work. So that is my recommendation for that. Let me know, I've been thinking about a video idea about showing you guys some of my Amazon Alexa stuff that I use for content creation, how I have it all set up in my office using a few small devices that makes content creation that much easier. I can crank out stuff way faster. Let me know if that's a video idea that you guys wanna see come to life. But that's what I'm gonna leave it for this video. Remember to create, post, repeat, and I will see y'all in the next one.